This video, I'm going to cover modular JS. So I, I made this really tiny little thing. It's like a people name adder. I can go Will, and then I can add Jack, and then I can add, I don't know, Frank. And then I can also delete these people from my module. So that's really all this thing does. So we're going to be getting into kind of how you code modular JS. Let me show you what I wrote out now. I call this spaghetti code. So we're going to use jQuery as an example because, you know, many, many JavaScript developers know jQuery. Um, and so this is what I call spaghetti code. It basically plops out the function required to make the thing work. Uh, we have two core actions going on. When I click on the button, then it's going to add the person to the list. And then when I click on the delete button, uh, it's going to delete the person from the list. Uh, but it's really, it's really a mess for a lot of reasons. So I'm going to kind of get into some concepts of what modular JavaScript looks like, why you want to do it, um, and really the people that need to learn modular programming are kind of those developers that are sitting at this breaking point of I can make jQuery work, I can code this, um, but I don't. you don't necessarily think like a software developer. So as soon as you start getting into large applications, what, what I'm looking for when I'm hiring a developer to work on a large application is someone who knows how to break up their code into logical components, components that do one thing, do it well, how to have the components work together. Um, and then, because that's really what working with a framework like Backbone or Angular is, is all your pieces of code are in their own components doing their own things. So what I'm going to show you today is kind of an in-between step uh, between just plunking out jQuery and using a framework like Backbone or Angular to start getting you thinking in terms of components, uh, separate pieces of functionality. So let me go over some ground rules real quick on what a modular or what a JS module should be. For one, it's a self-contained module. Uh, so everything to do with my module is in my module. So in this case, my module will be this part of a web page. If a web page has 20 different things on it, this people adder will be my module. Um, there's going to be no global variables. See, there's a problem with this JavaScript right here is that I have ver people and ver template. So if any other module on the page also has a template, they can't call it template because uh, their code will break this code. That's terrible, terrible. And it also, if you have a huge JavaScript application, you can't have a bunch of global things. It's actually going to slow down your performance. Uh, so no global variables. That's just kind of a given. You really should never have any global variables. Maybe one for your whole application that you share, but that's about it. Um, and then if a module manages more than one thing, it should be split up. Uh, right now we have a module that manages people. So there's this people adder thing once again. And then that's about it. So I can keep this all in one module. Now if each person had more functionality, like if I could edit this name or maybe, I don't know, send it this, a person an email from here, then this each individual person should also be its own module. But for now, I can just do one module for this. I'll explain a little bit more of that later on. Um, separation of concerns in our code. Uh, one terrible thing about this is every piece of code is doing every kind of task. We're searching the DOM here. Uh, we're binding a function to that. We're binding a listener to that element. Uh, and then we're searching here for another element and we're binding another listener. In here, we are updating our HTML with you know uh, a new person. And then down here, we're actually removing something from our HTML. There's just stuff all over the place. Uh, it's just not very separated code. At first, this looks kind of simple, uh, but it, the more you get into it, you're more it's really frustrating. I can't exactly just quickly glance at this and know what's going on. And I'll show you why once we modularize it. Um, dry code, don't repeat yourself. Uh, you should never, there's a lot of repeating going on here. I'm searching the DOM for people module a lot. For one, that's not very efficient. I shouldn't have to search my HTML file for ID of people module, but one time. And I'm doing it here. I'm doing it every time there's a click. This function runs and I search for people module again and again and again. That's terrible, terrible. Um, it's very slow JavaScript. You're not going to notice it when it's just one thing on your page when you don't have a JavaScript application. But as your application grows, that is terrible practice. Um, and so we're going to want to do what's called DOM caching, which brings us to efficient DOM usage. We want very few of these dollar selections. We want very few of those. We want to see some more find action going on, but we ideally just want one of these per module. Um, the DOM element, which we can totally do. This is my module, which I'll get into the HTML a little later. Um, I should be able to snatch this whole piece of code out by ID 
And then I don't ever have to search my DOM again for this ID. I can look within this for all the HTML I need. So I just want to see kind of maybe one of those per module. Maybe a second one if you have a good reason for it, but really just one of them. Um, very few dollar selections. And I want no memory leaks. Um, I want all events, which this is an event right here, a click event. We're binding this function to that event. I want that to be able to be unbound. So what happens if we're on a single page module, a single page application? This is really where it comes into play is if you're on a single page application, you can navigate to four or five different pages without ever actually navigating up here. It's called a single page app. Um, then this people thing actually has to go away for a time. And then it has to come back. It has to go away and it kind of has to come back. Um, and whenever it goes away, I want all these events to go away with it. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a memory leak. As long as there's an event bound to this people module, even if the people module disappears, it's not going to take it out of memory because it says, hey, you still have something listening to it, so I'm not going to take it out of memory. And that's where you'll get a memory leak. So the more someone uses your application, say it's something like Gmail where you never navigate away, but you might go to an email and then back to an email list and then to another email, back to an email list. If you have a memory leak, even something as simple as one event listener that never goes away, uh, then it can keep piling up on top of itself for every email you've seen. Um, and eventually your browser runs out of memory and crashes or gets very slow or your whole computer starts running slow. So that's kind of what a memory leak is. We'll get into that in a little bit as well. So these are some ground rules. Um, let's just actually start covering what does actual modular programming look like? Uh, so let me just kind of comment out this code real quick. Uh, the basis of modular programming, we're going to be using a, uh, an object literal. Uh, for this one, it's an object literal pattern. I'm going to actually put a link to an ebook from Adi Asmani that's really good that covers a lot of design patterns. But lots of times it's just an object literal pattern. Um, and all that is is that's just you're using an object. So we could call this my module equals, and there's my object. And then you can add values to this. So I could go name, my name is Will, age 34. And then I could put, say, name. And this would be a function. So it's called a method. Um, um, a function that lives on an object is called a method. So this is the say name method. And I could just go alert this dot name. And this refers to my module uh, since this is the object that it's sitting on. So that will alert will. So now all I have to do is go my module dot say name. There you go. And so now if I save and refresh, it shouts will. Excellent. So I could do another thing to here. I could go set name. And then that would go uh, this dot name equals, well, let's see, new name. So I could say set name, give it a new name. Now this dot name equals new name. So that's kind of how a module works. And so now you can see this whole will thing is now living on one object. So I could go my module set name. Uh, let's set it to Willis. And then I'll say my name. So it's just going to say Willis. And so I have, my, I have access to my module here. Dot set name. Uh, me. Oops, I actually changed my frame on accident. Whoop, let's go back to that top frame. I have ad block pro running. So let's go my module set name me. My module say name. And now it's going to say me. So that's kind of how a module works. Um, and the methods that you expose to other modules, the things that allow other modules to do actions are called um, your API. So currently my API has two methods. It has say name and it has set name. So that's kind of what I have here. I'm using say name and I'm using set name. Now with the object literal pattern, everything is accessible. So I could actually hack this and just go my module dot name equals me. Or I guess I could change it back to will. And then I could say name and it's going to say will. That's really not the way you should interact with the module. You should use methods that are provided for you. And then in, in another pattern, uh, the revealing module pattern, we're actually going to be able to hide some of these things away to where nobody else can access them. Only the module itself can access them. So that's kind of the modular pattern. Uh, and so we'll end this video for now because you might need to rewatch it, kind of get some of the concepts, kind of understand what I'm talking about. And then in the next video, we're going to actually convert this spaghetti code into a beautiful little module.